TV. Memorable entertainment. Television. Right now at five, Chiefs fans in Joplin head out after the victory for some brand new gear. And after that snowy start yesterday, it's a lot better today. We'll take a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, Kansas City gets ready to paint the town red and gold in preparation for a Chiefs victory parade. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. It's Tuesday. It, it is only it's Tuesday. It's Fat Tuesday. It's Fat Tuesday. It's Mardi Gras. Are you in front of me? No, <laughs> but it is. It's, it's the big day to celebrate, even though we're not in New Orleans. I'm sure people will still be out celebrating. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yes. And it's, hey, and it's going to be a great day for that kind of thing. You know, it's... Uh, Boy, that snow yesterday, for some folks, it really was bizarre. Came down and then it was gone for like, like here at the station. We mentioned this yesterday. It was gone like that. It was like it snowed. Bizarre. It was like an inch and a half outside, and within an hour, it was gone. Uh, still some snow, though, hanging around in other areas that got a little bit more. Joplin, mm -hmm. for example. I know we've got a little bit of snow on the ground, but that's going to be gone soon. In fact, in the next like, few hours here. Let's take a quick look outside. This is uh, our camera. On top of the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin, you can see uh, the majority of the snow there, if not all of the snow, pretty well gone from the downtown area. MoDOT camera, 20th and range line, looking back to the north, also showing where that snow is pretty well gone. Still a few yards here and there where there's some snow out there, but it will eventually go away because, boy, today is going to be a warm day. However, we want to advise you, take a couple of seconds, make sure you give yourself time for a quick scrape this morning, a little bit of frost on the wind shields out there. I was unpleasantly surprised about that, but we, it, the good news is it was a very thin layer. I mean, it came off like that. Just be prepared for that, though. Temperatures around the area, a bit on the cold side. Some of us about average. we got some mid-20s out there. We've got some upper 20s, even a few low 30s. Kids getting on the bus this morning, they're going to want to bundle up. It's sunny but cold. South breeze about 3 to 5, 32 degrees. And when that bus brings them home, this is what we're talking about. Look at that, 55 degrees. That's courtesy of a southwest breeze, 5 to 15, gusting to 25, ushering in much warmer temperatures. That's where our highs are looking to be, mid-upper 50 out there, sunny skies, clear skies initially into the evening. An absolutely beautiful day with just a bit of a gusty wind here and there. We're going to talk about how long the warm weather lasts and when our next round of rain will be here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin? Thanks, Chris. Parsons, Kansas police arrest a suspected car thief. Police got a call on February 10th about a possible stolen vehicle. Authorities say 26-year-old Peter Olson Jr. of Coffeyville stole a vehicle from his ex-girlfriend after a domestic situation. Officers quickly found the vehicle at a home, which they were told had two firearms inside. They then set up a perimeter before entering the home, finding Olson and arresting him without incident. And many people in our area found snow on the ground yesterday morning, but many others didn't. This is video from Joplin, where the city saw substantial flakes falling. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, not so much. A sort of like a, a circle around Pittsburgh where there were heavy amounts of participation around this. But she says, we, it seemed like we were in that funnel. So the, the weather phenomena that came through uh, was very favorable for the Pittsburgh Crawford County area. The sun and higher temperatures have cleared snow off much of the roadways. And some drivers in Jasper County, Missouri, might want to take a detour in the coming days. Starting today at 7 a.m. until 3.30 in the afternoon, Missouri road crews will cut back brush along Route D between Maverick Road and Grand Street north of Joplin. Route D will be closed where crews are working. MoDOT expects the brush clearing to finish by March 1st. And KDOT is accepting applications for the Spring 2024 Round of Agencies Cost Share Program. That program provides financial assistance for construction projects to improve safety and help both rural and urban areas of the state improve the transportation system. Nearly $140 million have been given to Kansas communities since the cost share program began in 2019. You can visit our website at koamnewsnow.com for application information. 
And if you're ever on the go and want to still be able to watch our new casts live, just download the KOAM Plus app. It's available free of charge on app stores of your choice. Just search for KOAM Plus. For the first time since 2005, there's a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion. Kansas City Chiefs fans in the four states wasted no time. Immediately after the Chiefs' overtime win over the 49ers Sunday night, some fans immediately began buying up Super Bowl memorabilia. Academy Sports in Joplin stayed open late into the night to accommodate Chiefs fans. That's where we caught up with some. As you might imagine, they're excited, although some weren't quite sure Casey would get the win. Well, I wasn't exactly sure. <laughs> when, when they didn't score first, it was a little iffy, so. Oh my God, I couldn't stop screaming. She I was freaking the out. Dog. And then I had friends in Pennsylvania text me, we heard you screaming. <laughs> The Chiefs became the first back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions since 2005. And the Kansas City Chiefs are back home and ready to celebrate with their fans. Head coach Andy Reid stepped off the chartered jet with the Lombardi Trophy in hand. The Kansas City Sports Commission will spend roughly a million dollars for this week's Super Bowl parade and celebration. And for the third time in five years, Kansas City is now preparing for a Super Bowl parade. This year, it'll be on Valentine's Day, this coming Wednesday, starting at 11 a.m., followed by a victory rally at Union Station around 12.45 p.m. A lot of schools in the Kansas City area have canceled classes for that day. And if you can't make it there in person, you have another option. You can watch it from your home or office. We'll be live streaming the parade and celebration on our YouTube page. So you can scan this QR code to go straight there or just search KOAM News Now on YouTube. If you plan to be there in person, you should know that the route is mostly the same as for the last two parades, but slightly different. It'll start at 6th Street in the Kansas City River Market and end at Pershing Road in front of Union Station. However, this time the parade won't pass through the River Market. You'll find more information on the parade route and parking and transportation options on our website at koamnewsnow.com. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News, Joplin and Webb City Girls Hoops meet last night for the first time this season. We'll have the details. Plus, Carnival revelers in Brazil flock to the streets Sunday to enjoy a street party with an environmental message. And we have a nice and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back off a professionally installed and supplied water heater. Schedule now at gopaskel.com. Well, Sunday night Super Bowl came down to the final seconds of overtime and with it some confusion about the new overtime rules. Multiple 49ers players say they didn't know about the rule change that guaranteed each team a possession. Things were different for the Chiefs, but Patrick Mahomes still had to do some explaining. Can I tell a quick funny story? Please. <laughs> I threw a touchdown to this dude at the end of the game. And he looked at me, I said, and he had no idea. I said, dude, we just won the Super Bowl. And then he, he, said he blacked out. He had no idea. I was like, bro, because like, he, he didn't even celebrate at the beginning. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> Certainly a very funny story. That, that'd be kind of wild, not knowing that you just won the Super Bowl. Be like, okay, cool. And then being told, like, oh, hey, by the way, we won. Well, switching gears to D2 College Basketball, Missouri Southern has won two in a row, thanks in a large part to the play of one of their big men, Darius Dawson. He's been the leading scorer in both of those home wins. Yesterday afternoon, Missouri Southern forward Darius Dawson named the MIAA Player of the Week. This comes after a week where he and the Lions went 2-0 over Lincoln and Central Missouri. Dawson averaged 24.5 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 blocks per contest. He's the first Lion men's player to win this honor in two seasons. And over to local high school basketball, Joplin Webb City Girls Hoops meet last night for the first time this season, each of them very much needing a win. Joplin Girls Basketball on the road at Webb City. Lady Eagles looking for their first win of February. Webb City turns up the pressure early. Entry pass to the post is nearly stolen, but the freshman Addie Burns hits the turnaround shot. A couple of possessions later, Abby Sargent with a jump pass to the corner. Mallory Stanley knocks down the three. 
Then Sargent sticks her hand in the passing lane, gets the steal and the layup. Webb City takes an early 13-2 lead. A lot of game left for Joplin to come back, though. Ashley Phillips lines up a three from the corner and hits to cut the deficit down to three. Then Alyssa Owens left open from beyond the arc. She sticks it, but that fast start gives Webb City plenty of cushion as Whitley Keith, another freshman, hits an open three. Webb City never surrenders the lead. The Lady Cardinals win at home 55-46. In college basketball, sixth-ranked Kansas is in Lubbock last night facing Texas Tech, hoping for its first road win in the last four tries. And this one is a shocker, a head-scratcher, whatever you want to call it, but you typically don't see the number 16 in the nation get blown out. That's what happened last night. Jayhawks lose 79-50 to Texas Tech after getting outscored by 20 in the second half. They've now lost four consecutive road games, all of them in Big 12 play. Still so to come, we're going to learn why new studies are looking at the effects of long-term COVID-19 symptoms on pregnant uh, people and children. And we're going to have another check your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. This is Scott with... It's on sale now for Vita Nova Village's Mom Prom March 9th. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 516 now on this Tuesday morning, one day away from Valentine's Day. So hopefully you managed to pick up something for that special someone or you may be like me and you're going to do it tomorrow and surprise them later because you can't you can't hide those things. You know, it's hard to do sometimes we've been married for so long. Like, like I have, there's no hiding spots left. Like my wife knows where everything is that I could possibly hide. So I have to wait until the day of when she's going to be at work before I can buy anything. Some of you folks at home, some of you guys at home, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's no surprising her anymore. All right, let's look outside. This is our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin looking pretty good. Same from the MoDOT camera at 20th and range line in Joplin as well. One thing we need to talk about is wind gusts. Now today we're going to see occasional gusts out of the southwest that could be pushing upwards to 25 miles an hour. And we're going to have that happen again through most of our Wednesday. However, late Wednesday, we do have that possibility of seeing some wind gusts really ramp up out there, pushing upwards of say about 40, potentially even 45 miles an hour. So it'd be a bit breezy overnight Wednesday into our Thursday across the area before we start to see wind settle back down by Thursday afternoon. In Joplin right now, 31. By the way, the wind is the biggest of our concerns right now. Compared to yesterday, I'll take the wind versus all that snow we saw. Still some snow out there. Feels like 25 with a south breeze at 6 miles an hour. Temperatures around the region, again, around average or a bit above. We've got some mid to upper 20s out there and a few low 30s here and there. So it is a cold start. In fact, it's actually a little colder than it was yesterday when it was snowing. We're going to see temperatures rise quickly, though. That southwest breeze bringing in warm air. And we're going to go into the upper 40s by late morning with sunny skies and sunny skies will be the trend for us all afternoon. Temperatures much warmer today and well above average again. Back into the mid 50s, maybe even upper 50s out there. We're going to be above average, a little warmer tonight. Now, I know it's still cold. The 30s are cold, but it'll be warmer than where it is now. We may see a few clouds here and there. Otherwise, mostly clear skies dropping back into the upper 30s. And the warming trend not done. Low 60s for us on Wednesday. A little cooler Thursday and Friday back into the 50s. Some scattered showers possible each day. It's going to be very isolated, but there may be a stray shower or two. We are cool for sure heading into the weekend. Low 40s, low 50s, and by Monday, we go right back to about 60 degrees. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Quality, compassionate, affordable care. Topping Health Watch this morning, two new studies are looking at the effects of long-term COVID-19 symptoms on pregnant people and children. They're also among the millions of Americans dealing with symptoms long after infections. Research reveals one in 10 people who had COVID during pregnancy developed long-term symptoms, extending six months or more after they were infected. The most common symptoms, dizziness and fatigue. However, the percentage of pregnant people with long COVID is generally lower than the general U.S. population. The other study of children found long COVID symptoms, including breathing problems like a cough, shortness of breath, along with fatigue. 
A third of those children have symptoms even a year after infection. And more babies are at risk of being born with syphilis, which is called congenital syphilis. It's because more women are likely to have the STI and pass it on to their babies before birth. According to a report published Tuesday by the CDC, women giving birth in the U.S. are now three times more likely to have syphilis than there were in 2016. The report shows maternal syphilis rates are lowest among women who start receiving prenatal care in their first trimester. But among women who don't receive any prenatal care, rates are nearly four times higher than average. Maternal syphilis rates are also highest among mothers younger than 25, and they decreased with age. Treatment at least 30 days before delivery slashes the risk of the infection passing from mother to baby by 98%. In infants, syphilis can be life-threatening. And a popular erectile dysfunction drug may reduce risk of Alzheimer's. A study in the Journal of Neurology looked at the medical records of nearly 270,000 men. They found those taking Viagra were 18% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. The research did not uncover possible reasons and recommended additional research using both men and women. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, affecting more than 6 million people in the U.S. aged 65 and older. In Nashville, Tennessee, a young woman's year-long battle against breast cancer has been an emotional roller coaster. She took to social media to share her journey after receiving a life-altering diagnosis last year. But what she didn't expect was rapper Drake to surprise her with a $100,000 check during a concert. Erin Contrell has her story. Lauren Schwalier feels like she's been on a roller coaster for a year. That was one of the hardest parts as well, is your social identity just being completely ripped from you. Two days before her 33rd birthday, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. When I felt the lump the first time, I thought it was just a hormonal cyst from breastfeeding my daughter after I had her. At times, feeling like she's hit rock bottom. Be just exhausted, sleeping all the time, just not being fully present, not being able to work since July. Eventually, flipping a switch by having a more positive outlook on life, posting the journey on social media. That was the little bit of peace and positivity that I could take from this. And if I could put that out there for potentially other people to help them going through the same thing. Lauren had her last round of chemo in January and last week while she was having bone and CT scans. Her friend invited her to the Drake concert at Bridgestone Arena. But music is my favorite and concerts are my happy place. So I was just ready to go celebrate and have a good night. At one point during the show, the award-winning rapper makes a speech to the crowd. I want you to take five seconds out of your name to make somebody else's name. That's when Lauren pulled out her sign. It read, just finished chemo, and then on the other side, I wrote, no more chemo. Then strangers use their cell phone lights so Drake can notice Lauren. And the message was enough to make Drake proud. Calling Lauren a true soldier. I want you to uh, cash this in at the end of the night. And uh, we're going to give you $100,000 from the I collapsed holding on to the railing and his someone from his team gave me a water and I was just trying to drink it. When Lauren started her cancer journey, she didn't know Drake's gift was a part of God's plan. Without even like almost any hesitation, he was just so gracious and it really truly goes to show that God is working through him. At times she felt like she was starting from the bottom. But now she's here to keep inspiring others to fight. Drake helping me really makes me want to give back more. Lauren has already been in talks with Drake's team about the money. She plans to pay off a lot of her medical debt and put some money away for her two-year-old daughter. That's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we've got ourselves a cold start out there, but a much warmer day across the area. We'll take another look at that forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Spin the Wheel of Fortune. Six nights a week on KOAM TV. Right now at 5.30, students in Carthage get a lesson on growing and selling flowers. 
Uh, we've got ourselves a chilly start out there, but it is going to be much warmer and much sunnier today. We'll take a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, the Webb City Public Library invites the community out to take part in a book sale. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 529 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. So we had that snow yesterday. Yes. At least some of us did. Yeah. Not everybody saw very snow. Very hit or miss. It's it so strange. Very, very confined out there. But some of us got a fair amount. Joplin, for example, still has some snow on the ground. We got snow here at the station, but it melted yesterday. Really within quickly. a couple hours of mm -hmm. it stopping, it was gone. Uh, but all of the snow, whatever remains, is definitely going to be gone today as we are going to be considerably warmer out there. Let's take a quick look outside. Uh, this is the Modoc camera at uh, 20th and range line in Joplin. As you can see, at least from there, everything already clear out there. And of course, if it being a little colder, we do have a scrape alert. You want to give yourself a little extra time to get some of that frost off of your windshield this morning. Again, as it is cold, most of us actually relatively close to normal out there. Mid upper 20s across most of the area with a few lower 30 degree readings sprinkled in as well. So again, colder than we were yesterday, actually, when we were getting the snow. Not by much, but it is still technically colder. Sunny when the kids get picked up by the bus today. 32 degrees south breeze at about 3 to 5 miles an hour. And when that bus brings them home, still sunny outside. Clear skies, mid-50s southwest wind, though gusting upwards to 25. Those gusty winds are going to help usher in warmer weather across the area, at least for today, heading into tomorrow. Again, sunny through the day, clear initially through the evening. Gusty southwest winds here and there, otherwise almost a textbook spring-like day. We'll talk about how much longer the warm weather sticker sticks around and if there's any rain in our forecast here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. The Pittsburgh Community School District last night announced its newest superintendent. J.B. Elliott will take over the position on July 1st. Elliott has been the superintendent of the Perry LeCompton School District in Perry, Kansas for the past seven years. He has a total of 29 years in education, 21 of which was in administrative roles. And Carthage agriculture students have been busy for the past week and a half creating those perfect Valentine's Day arrangements. The furlough design portion of the class has been available only in the past two years. In that time, students take one week out of every month to create arrangements. With holidays like Valentine's Day, Easter, and Mother's Day all around the corner, students have been hard at work to make each arrangement special. When they get flowers, it makes them like feel good to, and I, I think, like I said, I really, when people like see that it's made by, you know, a Carthage FFA member, they really just, they really, like it makes them appreciate it more. And I think that's, that's why I like, I have to get it perfect because it's not for me, it's like, it's for that person. Students will be delivering arrangements within the school later today and will then look towards creating arrangements for Mother's Day. Is there such a thing as too many books? People shopping at the Webb City Public Library's annual book sale didn't think so. The sale started yesterday at the library and offers the public an opportunity to buy used books the library no longer needs. That includes everything from adult bestsellers to children's picture books. There's a lot of people, they may not have the money to go out and, you know, buy brand new books or anything like that. And if they have a library card, they can come in, get their hands on those brand new books, and then at our book sale, they get the used books for cheap. Money raised through the book sale will be used to buy new books for the library. The sale goes through February 24th. To see what times the sale will be open, visit our website at koamnewsnow.com. Humboldt, Kansas last night took a peek back in time to unveil something unseen for a hundred years. A century ago, the people of Humboldt, Kansas placed a cornerstone on what was then the new Humboldt High School. Last night, that time capsule was opened. KOAM's Elise Noe was there to see what was inside. That's the sound of a century-old seal being broken. 100 years ago, the people of Humboldt, Kansas, hit a piece of history for their future residents. Uh, last year, I uh, found that uh, an art newspaper article, one of our board members brought it in and said that there was a newspaper article that said that 100 years ago, when the original part of the high school was built, that a time capsule had been placed in the, around the cornerstone. And 
The community was able to find the box thanks to a construction project for the school. Sure enough, there was an opening on the bottom of it and tucked up in that cornerstone was this time capsule. Found inside the copper box sealed with melted lead was what was once a baseball. Um, I thought it was in pretty good shape. A coin, a stamp and a newspaper were also found and folded inside that newspaper was documentation from July 11th, 1923, the day the time capsule was created. Just having hundreds of years of history here through family and now being back back at my alma mater and being able to see the stuff that they buried 100 years ago and get us thinking about what we want to put forth in the next 100 years. The community of Humboldt will now replace this time capsule with a new one and decide what items best reflect their town today. We we're just able to put a bunch of stuff on a cell phone, then put the cell phone in a charger and then just hope that in 100 years they have a way to charge the phone up and then they could see pictures, documents, videos. And while those in the future may be puzzled by our perhaps archaic smartphones, folks from 100 years ago may have never guessed that the items they put in the box would be photographed on cell phones and live streamed across the internet. Again, 100 years ago, they would have thought that this was going to be opened in front of people who weren't even here um, and we're watching this on a screen somewhere. I, I think they would be shocked by that. In Humboldt, Kansas, Elise Snowy, KOEM News. To read more about the items found in the time capsule, visit our website. That's koamnewsnow.com. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Russia calls a meeting of the United Nations Security Council to accuse Ukraine of causing the Russians to invade. Plus, President Biden met with Jordan's King Abdullah to discuss their shared goal of ending the war in Gaza. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Station 87 and running. Topping World Watch, carnival revelers in Brazil flock to the streets Sunday to enjoy a street party with an environmental message. Over 30 people wore outfits made from soda and beer cans, marching and dancing through the streets. This tradition first began in 1997 after a group of people started gathering cans that were left behind from the well-known celebration, Carnival. The street party now pays people who collect cans for a living for their material. An authority seizing 20 tons of meth from a drug lab in Mexico. The Mexican Navy says that the lab was located in a remote township near the northern border state of Sonora. The hall accounts for about half of the 162,000 pounds of methamphetamine they've seized so far this year. Another 28,000 pounds of meth chemicals were also discovered. The bust comes a year after soldiers seized over half a million fentanyl pills in Sonora in what was believed at the time to be the largest synthetic drug lab ever located. And authorities in Colombia making a big cocaine bust. Colombia's military says it has seized more than 12,000 pounds of the drug. They say it was being stored in a small wooden house in a Necocle region in the country's northwest. It's the agency's biggest seizure of cocaine to date this year. One man was taken into custody. The military says the bust represents a huge blow against the El Clan del Golfo, the country's largest drug cartel. The seizure was made in an area of strategic importance for moving drugs from Colombia to Panama. And Russia calls a meeting of the United Nations Security Council to accuse Ukraine of not abiding by the Minsk agreements and causing the Russians to invade. Russian Ambassador Vasily Nebeznya said at the meeting on Monday that Donbas would have been returned to Ukraine if Ukraine would have kept up their part of the Minsk agreements. Accordings were signed in 2015 and outlined several political and military steps meant to ease the fighting between government forces and separatists in eastern Ukraine. The UN Assistant Secretary General told the Council the war today continues to escalate. And the longer this goes on, the smaller the prospects are, a just and lasting solution will be created. The U.S. ambassador told the meeting that Moscow continues to be the aggressor in this situation. President Biden met with Jordan's King Abdullah to discuss their shared goal of ending the war in Gaza and freeing hostages taken by Hamas. Both say they hope for a two-state solution. Correspondent Connor Hansen has more from New York. 
I've made clear the United States shares the goal of seeing Hamas defeated and ensuring long-term security for Israel and its people. President Biden says the U.S. and Jordan are working together to negotiate a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The two leaders say their current plan could buy a six-week pause in the fighting, but they would ultimately like to see a two-state solution. This comes as Israeli troops close in on the border town of Rafah, with more than one million people sheltering there, many having fled from the northern part of Gaza, the president is urging Israel to prevent more civilian deaths. Every innocent life in Gaza is a tragedy, just as every innocent life lost in Israel is a tragedy as well. President Biden says more than 130 people are still being held hostage by Hamas. According to the Israeli Defense Forces, two were rescued in Rafah. This rescue mission underscores the importance of our ground operation in Gaza. Both Biden and King Abdullah II stressed they need more aid to get into Gaza. The UN agency responsible for relief in the region is facing even more criticism after a Hamas tunnel was found underneath its headquarters. King Abdullah says UNRWA should still be supported. Restrictions on vital relief aid and medical items are leading to inhumane conditions. After meeting with President Biden, King Abdullah plans to meet with leaders in Canada, France, and Germany. That's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Professionally installed and supplied water heater. Schedule now at gopascal.com. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. It is 544 on this Tuesday morning coming up on 545. This is a live look from our camera downtown Joplin on top of the Cornell Complex. Looking pretty good this morning, although it is a bit on the cold side. Modoc camera 20th and range line looking back to the north. Also looking good. No snow to be seen here, but our camera at 7th and range line, range line is showing still some remaining snow. Now, a couple of things to talk about, really one big thing to talk about, and that's wind. Now, today it's not going to be too bad. We're going to have occasional southwesterly gusts upwards of about 25 miles an hour, and that'll continue through the evening and into our Wednesday, and then by Wednesday evening, we could see these gusts come up out of the south-southwest, upwards of 30, potentially 40 miles an hour in some cases, so it's going to be quite breezy late Wednesday overnight into early Thursday, and then by Thursday afternoon, we'll have an opportunity to see those winds calm down a bit. So there's still some of that snow out there, but it will not last much longer, as today is going to be a very nice day. 31 in Joplin right now, feeling like 25 with that south breeze at about 6 miles an hour. Temperatures around the region. Again, it is colder this morning than it was yesterday, even though we had the snow yesterday. A lot of us about average. We should be in right around the mid 20s and we've got a few mid upper 20s across the area and a couple of low 30s here and there. So again, it is a cold start to the day, which it's always the crazy thing to me is how it's it's colder this morning than it was yesterday, but it's going to be warmer today than it was yesterday as we are looking at sunny skies at Southwest breeze will be ushering in the warmer temperatures. We're going to be upper 40s by late morning into the afternoon. Sunny mid even upper 50s in some cases out there. So an absolutely beautiful March day, even though we are still in February. And as we head into the evening hours across the area, still again a bit breezy out there. A few clouds here and there. Otherwise not bad, still cold, but a bit warmer even tonight than it is right now as we fall back into the upper 30s out there. As we look at the week ahead, <clears throat> it's going to be a little warmer tomorrow. Low to mid 60s out there, still breezy as we mentioned, and a few clouds here and there. And we cool back a bit Thursday and Friday into the low 50s, and we could see a few isolated showers Thursday and Friday. It's going to be very isolated at best out there. I think most of us will remain dry and otherwise cloudy. As we head into the weekend, take a look at Saturday. That's going to be cold. That's actually below normal as we fall into the low 40s, but worry not. It warms back up. Low 50s by Sunday, 60 on Monday. Again, breezy, and it's going to be windy next week, ushering in considerably warmer temperatures. So now we're talking being about 20. 
some odd degrees above normal. And look at some of these lows, upper 40s, even into the 50s next week. Ahead of additional rain chances next Thursday, and even that only kicks us down into the low 60s. So some big changes next week. Very breezy, much warmer out there, and some additional rain chances. All in all, though, once again, not a bad forecast for the next several days. That's a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. A new documentary looks at the first black pilots, engineers, and scientists to become astronauts, including stories some black astronauts themselves had never heard. David Daniel has a story. Growing up, I loved the space program. But nobody doing that stuff looked like me. The space race explores the history and progress of black astronauts, including former astronaut and NASA educator Leland Melvin. It was just natural to, to be part of this and then to be able to interact with you know, Ed Dwight, one of my one of my heroes. I was told by friends and enemies alike, you're 20 years too soon, buddy. Ed Dwight was the first black U.S. astronaut candidate amid the civil rights struggles of 1963. I would have made it to the moon. One small step for man. They were not going to let that happen. Dwight says he's grateful for the chance to set the record straight. All these past stories uh, that, that have been put in the press to justify my not going into space. To see a black man in space. It would have changed things. The directors say each astronaut they interviewed told them they also had to talk with someone else. I'm here because others paved the way for me. You need to, you know, learn their stories to understand mine. And then their goal is always to make sure that once they've opened those doors, that other people are going to come behind them. We wanted to sit with them and hear their unfiltered emotional journeys like Victor Glover, who spent more than six months on the International Space Station as protests over the death of George Floyd continued on Earth, prompting a call with other current and former black astronauts. I was blown away to see all of these names pop up on the screen. May Jemison, Charlie Bolden, and Guy Bluford. They were all saying, what can we do for you? How can we help you? Black history is American history. We forget it at our peril. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Glover has been selected as the pilot of the Artemis II mission, which would make him the first black astronaut to orbit the moon. The space race streams beginning today on Hulu and Disney+. And a unique donation offer of a one-time nuclear delivery device leads to a startling discovery in a Washington garage. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Authorities in Washington state were blown away to find a Cold War era missile inside a local man's garage. It started when police were contacted by the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, who said a resident in Bellevue, Washington called about donating a deceased neighbor's very unique antique, a Douglas Air II Genie, a Cold War era rocket designed to carry a nuclear warhead. Police and bomb squad officials visited the house and did find the relic rocket, but only as a former shell of itself, rusted out with no warhead attached. The rocket was deemed inert and thus okay for donation. The cops posted to Twitter along with a pithy Rocket Man reference saying they think it's gonna be a long, long time before they get another call like this one. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? I guess police. There's a kangaroo in my uh, apartment complex. Deputies in Tampa, Florida got a strange call of their own when a kangaroo on the loose was spotted hopping around an apartment complex's grounds. Deputies responded and confirmed the strange suspect, but the wild roost chase didn't last long. The furry fella was safely reunited with its rightful owner. Now let's send it over to sports to get a recap of the big game. I'm, of course, talking about the annual Animal Planet Puppy Bowl, a goofy gridiron tradition starring a fleet of furry footballers. Defending champs Team Fluff took on Team Ruff, and while Team Fluff took an early two-touchdown lead, Team Ruff recovered in the fourth quarter to win 72-69, to taking home the illustrious Lombarki Trophy. Fans understandably went nuts after the victory. I, oh, nope, wait, that was from the other big game. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. 
those are some pretty cute puppies. Well, we'll be right back with some more news right after this. Hi, I'm Dow Quick. Or visit VitaNovaVillage.org and you'll help provide homeless individuals with a private living space and the support to succeed. Hundreds of thousands line the streets of western cities in Germany to watch carnival parades. Celebrators showed up in costumes enjoying candy, flowers and alcohol. Colorful floats floated through the streets, some of them focusing on political issues or the side of sarcasm. Much of Germany's carnival celebrations take place in February, with schools in the western region closing so children can join in on the fun. And get ready to party, because today is Mardi Gras, which is French for Fat Tuesday. It's a day of debauchery ahead of the restrictions of Lent. In the U.S., massive celebrations with parades, street parties, mass balls, and other events are held in New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama. They're also held internationally in Venice, Rio de Janeiro, and elsewhere in what's called Carnival. Fat Tuesday always lands 47 days before Easter and a day before Ash Wednesday. And we've got ourselves a much warmer and breezier day across the area. Sunny skies, upper 40s by late morning. We'll have a southwest breeze occasionally gusting around 20 miles an hour. Highs today, mid upper 50s out there, plentiful sunshine. So any of the remaining snow that's out there should be gone by this evening. And we're gonna stay breezy and not bad through the evening. We're still a little bit on the cold side, but above average as we fall back into the upper 30s with just a few clouds here and there. Heading into our Thursday, sorry, Wednesday. <laughs> oh boy, it's uh, only Tuesday. Uh, for Valentine's Day, a great day, breezy again, low 60s. And by the evening, we could see those gusts pushing upwards of 40, 45 miles an hour. So do be prepared for that Wednesday evening into early Thursday morning. Showers isolated at best Thursday and Friday at this point. So most of us, I think, will remain dry. We're a little cooler back into the 50s. Much cooler Saturday. In fact, technically below average as we go into the low 40s. Sunny and we get breezy again as we head into next week. Temperatures warming up though, staying breezy through Wednesday into the low 70s by next Wednesday with some rain chances by Thursday. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Meals on Wheels, Pittsburgh.